Okay, time for another uh, progress update on my Homebrew Z80 project. Um, you can see things have changed quite a bit since my last video. I've actually got um, a good part of the circuit off the breadboard now and onto a, um, a prototype PCB. Um, I usually don't like to do this until much later in a project when I have everything more or less figured out, but um, you know, with something like this it's actually really difficult to do the whole thing on a breadboard. Just connecting the, the CPU to the, the RAM and the ROM um, you know, almost completely exhausted my supply of these little jumper cables, and even if I, you know, bought some more, it's it's actually really hard to see uh, where everything is under the the rat's nest that very quickly builds up. So, you know, I've kind of now got um the the Z80 itself, um the eight kilobyte ROM and the five twelve kilobyte uh, RAM, along with some uh, you know glue logic and stuff. Uh, you know, sort of up on the board here. I've got some uh, female headers on either side of the Z80, um, very much like what you see, you know, on, on an Arduino or something like that. And that lets me kind of, you know, connect a few things off on the breadboard, you know, up so I can kind of prototype things one little bit at a time over here and then move them over to the board when, when everything works. So um, what I've got on the breadboard today is actually uh, uh, a compact flash um, CF card uh, up here, which is plugged into a, um, a CF to IDE uh, adapter. Um, it turns out it's actually much easier to interface um, you know, an IDE drive with uh, an 8-bit microprocessor like the Z80 than it is um, an SD card for various reasons. Um, and you know, once again, I've got a, a row of eight LEDs here. Um, in my first video, these LEDs were connected directly to the Z80's data bus. So, in addition to showing up the actual, uh, you know, output of the programs I was running, we were also seeing, you know, um, uh, machine code instructions being fetched and, and noise like that. Um, I actually now have the LEDs hooked up to a, um, a little 8-bit uh, latch at the end here, um, so that we, we only see the the actual output values. Um, so I'm gonna. Uh, power this on now, and uh, what's happening now is that at the moment this is um, the, C uh, the Z80 is being clocked uh, externally. This this orange white here is carrying uh, a very slow, like you know, one hertz or so clock signal um, from a little RC oscillator up here. So uh, it's very slowly um, loading the the first uh, 512 kilobyte sector off the CF card um, into the RAM. So there's a, a little bootloading program on the ROM which which gets it to, to do all this, and then once uh, you know once that code is loaded into RAM, it then the Z80 uh, you know jumps to the appropriate address and begins executing um, that program that's read off the off the CF card. And what this program um, that's loading now does, so it'll, it'll take about uh, a minute and a half with this this slow external clock to, to load the program and start running it. Um, what it's going to do is compute uh, Fibonacci numbers and you know display them on the, the LEDs here. Um, they're going to show up uh, least significant bit on the left, which is kind of backwards. Uh, sorry about that, but you know you can still follow it. And um, it's it's going to cycle through uh, the first. 10 Fibonacci uh, numbers, I think. Um, it gets to the loudest one, which you can actually uh, fit, you know, on, a, on an 8-bit display, and um, and then it's going to halt. Um, and the reason it halts rather than looping is so that we can uh, do this again afterwards at, at very high speed and actually uh, see that it's it's working. So hopefully this will. Um, okay, here we go. So here's one, uh, two, three, five, eight, eleven. Kind of through the Fibonacci sequences, uh, Fibonacci sequence, yeah, one one number at a time, and okay, so we get here to um, 233, I think, which is the the largest eight Fibonacci number, and then it halts, um, and you know, it kind of sits there forever after. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kill the power. Um, I'm going to remove uh, the external slow clock. Um, so I'm not sure you can see it currently, but yeah. Further down on the proto board down here is a um, you know, there's a tiny little uh, quartz oscillator circuit in the corner here. Um, so this is a, a 10 megahertz quartz crystal. Um, 10 megahertz is the the maximum speed that this particular ZD model can be clocked at. And there's um, there's a little uh, binary ripple counter here, which kind of lets me uh, divide it down by my powers of two. So there are four pairs of header pins here, 
and by sticking a jumper on there I can send uh, a 10 megahertz clock to the Z80, um, a 5 megahertz, 2.5 or 1.25. Um, I'm going to jump straight to maximum speed and kind of stick a jumper on the, the 10 megahertz slot here and then put the power back on and you'll see, okay, there it's holded on 233 uh, immediately. You actually, you know, you can't see any of the preceding nine Fibonacci numbers because the whole thing happens uh, way too fast. Um, but, you know, the fact that it's, it's you know, halting at the correct number, let's know that it's working. If the program was set up to loop, um, all you'd see here was kind of, uh, you know, a, a blur of, of, of LEDs, um, where the, you know, the brightness of each LED would be proportional to the uh, you know, number of times that those bits are turned on in the Fibonacci numbers, but it would be kind of hard to interpret. But, um, so this is whole on 233, so this means that, you know, the process of reading uh, the program from the CF card and storing it in RAM and then executing the program itself have all worked fine, um, even at, at 10 megahertz, despite the fact that this is, you know, a fairly fairly messy kind of, of wiring job, which is, um, which is really nice. So that's where I am uh, at the moment. Um, the the next step after I kind of move all the CF stuff, you know, onto the the board and make it permanent will be to um, get a uh, a UART chip or a a, um, a serial serial interface chip, um, and that'll let me actually uh, you know use a a real PC's um, keyboard and and monitor to kind of uh, you know send and receive uh, bytes from the Z80, um, which will be really really cool and really fun. Um, yeah, that's all for now, I think. Thanks for watching.